Uh, yep, there we go. Had a feeling that would happen. Hang on, guys. We had a uh, <laughs> we had a bit a bit of an issue with our uh, our videos and all that. So you know, one second. Hey, there we are. That's what there's happens. our pretty faces. That's what happens. Uh, when there's a Giants fan in the chat. <laughs> That's what happens when the Eagles bring it down to the goddamn wire. Let's go, baby. Whew. If you guys were wondering, yes, the reason that we uh, you know, yeah. bumped the stream back was was because the Eagles game went uh, got a little. They were cutting it a little close, you know. Oh, we <laughs> birds fans, yes. Yeah. Uh, so we we decided, you know what? Um, we're gonna we're gonna stick around and we're gonna we're gonna finish. This light is so strong on my face. Well, wait, and you know what I'm thinking? You know what I'm realizing? <laughs> what the the lighting is way more dramatic because we forgot to move this one. From, oh yeah, from, I kind of like this <laughs> I more. I did. Yeah. yeah, I'm down. I'm gonna. Which which one is this? It's one? a lot more dynamic. There we go. All right. Uh... I wouldn't go that. No, because you need yeah, the. Give me a second. Give me a second. I was gonna say you need the differentiation. Give me a second. There we go. See, I'd go a little bit higher. There you go. Yes, that's good. There you go. Nice. <laughs> there we go. And as you can see, now that it is well into October, we are into button-down mode, which is oh, a mode yeah. that I personally prefer. Um, this is our natural. This is habitat. nice and this is cozy. This is the way things are meant to be. Just that one. I did some. Uh, I did some Halloween stuff last night. I took two of my friends out to Shocktoberfest yes. in Reading, Pennsylvania, and got to enjoy. Uh, my friend being oddly stoic the entire time and his little sister uh, trying to be tough and then screaming. So <laughs> she has it on video. There's a great little clip of this video she took, just had her phone in her pocket, where uh, you just hear her scream bloody murder. Yeah. And then immediately go, go away, I'm not scared of you. <laughs> no, wait, you, you got to fill them in on the one, uh, the the... the... The, the one that you were telling me earlier. Oh, which one was that? The, the, like, not, like, the one with the person behind you where you made the dead pen. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we're walking through, uh, what's, we're, we're walking through the, uh, the beginning of this one and the people ahead of us were, we were all, you know, you know, you go to a haunted house and you immediately become very tight with everybody in your group, even the strangers, because you're all trying not to die. So, we uh, we get in, and the people ahead of me moved a little too far ahead of us because uh, my friends were um, lagging because it was very dark. You couldn't see. So we get into into there, and I lost the people ahead of me, and I'm like, guys, we need to, like, I, I need you guys, we got to move faster because we don't want to get too separated from, I, like, I don't want you guys to get stuck behind me because I don't want to turn around and have somebody there who's not one of you. And at this exact moment to my right, there's one of the actors for the attraction. Yeah. I go, like her. <laughs> and the actor is just like, mm. <laughs> I had to turn aside and be like, oh no, like, I can't laugh. <laughs> like, if you're able to just fully deadpan, there he goes. If you're able to just fully deadpan in the middle of a haunted house to the point where the actors who are trying to scare you can't help themselves but laugh. I try not to, like, break the, uh, I, I try not to break the the thing for everybody. Yeah. And I, like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be scared sometimes and all that, but I do these a lot, and I talk about this shit for a living, so yeah. for me, it's not quite as easy to just be scared. Yeah. But uh, I do try to make sure that we don't, that I don't, like, ruin it for other people, because yeah. there's, there's a good line. There's, like, responding to things humorously, and then there's the people who are like, I'm not scared of you. You can't touch me. You can't hurt me. Yeah. It's just like, um, okay, dude. Like, yeah. Although I why do, are you here? I do prefer the haunted houses where they're allowed to touch you. Because it's so much more immersive that way. Uh, like, <laughs> I don't do a good job of being scared. I just don't like it. Oh, my God. You're lame. I am. I'm you're a lame fan. And through. Um, I wanted to change up the compressor a little bit and uh, give us a little bit more room really quick. But we are going to get into the actual material of the show in a moment. I just need to up some stuff. There well, we technically, we're, right. we're... Okay, we're... that's much better. Wow. Do you see how much higher the levels are now? Yeah, no, that's a hell of a lot better. I hope the audio sounds better, everybody. It should. Um, a spiffy as in terms of just, like, I'm wearing a collared shirt. Uh, yeah, that's just because... I get it. Generally, it's too My hot. My mom told me to turn off the light, but we need the light, so I just adjusted the light. Yeah, it's, you know, it's... It's, yeah. it's background. It's ambiance. Film. Yeah. That's that's what they teach you in, in film school. You gotta like create. You, you have to use 
in frame lighting yeah. to give dynamicism to it. Dynamicism. Oh yeah. Is that a word? No. Okay. Didn't but I so. like it. <laughs> uh, also, just for people who are tuning in who might be like, man, you guys haven't talked about the topic yet. Uh, we like to. We do. We have had new people lately who are like, why do you guys take so long to? Because we we want to let people trickle in and get to the point where you know we're at our our expected viewership rate. You know, once yeah. once we you know we're up there with slick. <laughs> but we we just want to make sure that people aren't like coming in and the show's already like. Yeah. Out of the game. That's that's what we have the recorded segments for. Yeah. But we're going to talk about a few things tonight. Um, there is, of course, uh, the, the title of this is Smile. Mm -hmm. If you have not yet seen the movie Smile, we will try to avoid any serious spoilers. But there might be mild spoilers. Yeah. So just, uh, you know, we will do our best to make sure we give an actual spoiler alert and all that. Uh, but, you know, just letting you guys know. And uh, then we're going to go and talk about some of, for example, the Missing 411 stuff that has to do with, uh, with um, you know, the Uncanny Valley and all yep. that. So that's why Missing 411 is still in the title for this one. Yes. And we're going to be talking about uh, a case that I cannot corroborate because it is all anonymous, but it is one of the Missing 411 cases um, that, you know, Mr. Ballin talked about early on. It's one of the well-known ones. Uh, and that's the, the one of the robot grandma. And uh, one thing that I that I will say has driven me a little bit nuts the more I have kind of gone in and fact-checked, mm -hmm. not even fact-checked, but done the independent research for these Missing 411 videos, is there's a lot of times where liberties are taken or there's vague things that are said. Uh, you know, for example, with the Nahani River Valley thing, mm -hmm. there's like front and center of that Missing 411 story is local, you know, native folklore tells of pale-faced demons in the woods. Yeah. And I I did not find that until the very 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 end mm. of my research into the into it because it comes from a 1946 account where it's a second it's a guy saying that the native said this to him. He doesn't see them himself. He speaks to the natives then he reports on it later on. Mm. So that's something that's just, you know, I, I want full transparency there like I get what David Politis is trying to do, and I do think he's a firm believer in what he's talking about, but there are certain times where I'm like, all right, you know, that that there was a liberty taken there, you yeah. know? Um, so we are going to talk about the, the robot grandma one, because that's one of the ones where, like, it's completely incorroborable. Yeah. Like, there... And, and I was not able to find similar stories, but it's still a fun one, and it gets into the psychology of everything. Yeah. Um, so that's where this one's going. I uh, I think I, I think let's start out uh you know with with the the missing four on one story I sure think that that's that's the best place to start with this one um we will be giving our our thoughts on the smile movie by the way which I only have good things to say um yeah it was good I, I think you know we'll, we'll get into that but I I really thought it was a good a good horror movie it was the you know it, it, there was like it was gory but without being like you know yeah well, chainsaw massacre no, or I saw mean, something like that. I'm coming from a position where my tolerance for gore is very high at this point, just from, if you're familiar with the show The Boys. Aiden um, used to watch ISIS beheading videos for fun? Used to. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I mean, like, shows like The Boys and, and Game of Thrones oh, and everything yeah. at this point have really kind of desensitized Dude, me to the, gore in film. The Boys. Exactly. Oh my God. The Boys. Yeah, the bo the boys the the level of gore in the boys is a little over the top. Yeah. Um, but it is what it is. Anyway, yeah. robot grandma story. Let's hear it. October first, two thousand ten. It's been twelve years, almost to the day. Yes. Twelve years ago, uh, a family of four whose names have been redacted. Uh, a, by, family by redacted. a family of redacted. A family of redacted. A redacted of redacted. Yep. Uh, the redacted year old was sitting redacted. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, the three and a half year old uh, child, the youngest child, he's their son. He and his older sister, who I could not find her age for some reason, but uh, his older sister are sit. Oh my god, my hair's like sticking up in the back, like I'm fucking alfalfa from. Like, sorry, it's your like, ADD is it's showing. It's bugging me a little bit. Like, yeah, okay, we're back to normal. We're back, we're 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 good. We're fine. back to you really. The yeah, regularly scheduled programming. Sometimes yeah. I can't speak. Go ahead. I can never speak. How many times did I have to say, uh, what, was it ubiquitous? Or? Yes. Yeah, it, it took me a while yeah. to get that one. Um, ages ago. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so, three and a half year old, older sister of unspecified age, mm -hmm. parents are somewhere in the campsite, but not directly next to the children. Yep. The older sister says that she was just hanging out with her little brother, and then she turned and looked away in another direction for maybe a few seconds. 
a minute at most, turns around, brother's gone. Now, this is not the first time that we've heard a story where that is the the, it's like Dennis the Martin disappearance. Like that, yeah. Dennis Martin, same thing. Chris Tompkins, same thing. Uh, the kid from uh, the Estes River, what was his name? Uh, Alfred Bielhartz. Yep. Nice. Same thing. So, th this is very common with these cases. Uh, people just vanish. Yep. And from people right next to them. So, kid is missing for five hours mm. from around 6 p.m. Uh, I guess six hours, but the, the search takes about five hours. So he's missing from about 6 p.m. to about 12, 15 a.m. They find him with dogs. Mm -hmm. They used uh, um, not cadaver dogs. They were uh, bloodhounds. Mm. They use bloodhounds, and they seek out the kid. And the weird part here is a lot of these stories uh, have something to do with, okay, the the tr the place where he was found had been searched numerous times. Yeah. And a lot of search and rescue people come into that and they're like, yeah, but that happens all the time where, like, there's brush, it's hard to see, people just miss it. But the dog missed it for five hours. Yeah, that's weird. And the dog found him, which means the dog could track his scent. So, again, if this story is true, that's weird. Yes. Now, a few weeks later, the kid is hanging out at his grandma's place mm -hmm. and tells her, I don't like the other Cappy. Now, he called his grandmother Cappy because her name was mm -hmm. Cappy and he was three and a half. Yeah. She's like, what do you mean the other Cappy? I'm the only Cappy. No Cap. Uh, <laughs> and... <laughs> of course. And so he tells her, you know, well, don't you remember when I was when I was lost on the mountain? And she goes, sure, why not? Um... <clears throat> Also, did you write down what the donation goals were for last week? What we decided? Uh, yeah, I wrote them somewhere. Can you can you see if you can figure that out? Because uh, I have totally lost track. Oh, they're in a uh, they're in a document somewhere. Hold up, I'm oh, okay. gonna pull right, up. Cool. Oh yeah, they're right here. We only did two. Yeah, we'll we'll figure out the other two. Okay. Yeah. They can super chat what they want the other two to be as well. Uh, <laughs> it's yeah. We need two fifty five hundred and seven fifty. Okay. We have we have the fourteen twenty and yes, one thousand. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Anyway, <laughs> he's like I. Uh, you know, I don't like the other Cappy. Well, what do you mean? Don't you remember when I was lost on the mountain? Mm -hmm. Well, I, uh, you know, the other Cappy yep. came and took me up to a cave. And in the cave, there were guns, purses, and uh, spiders. Lots of spiders. Uh -huh. Which for me, that would be the end of that. Uh, whoever was trying to take me into that cave would quickly find that I have uh, very little patience for spiders. Yes. Gets up in there. And describes, you know, basically that this this other Cappy mm -hmm. was like a robot. Mm. Looked identical to his grandmother, but yeah. for some reason he was identifying that this is this is not an organic person. Okay. Um, you know, this is this is a robot. And so they're like, ah, well what's what's up with that? Yeah. Um and she calls and then he says that she uh you know, the 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 other Cappy says you came from outer space, and we put you into your mom's tummy. And, like, pokes his stomach a bunch of times and tries to collect a stool sample using a sticky piece of paper. Yeah, uh, the story's weird. So, yeah. Cappy, concerned as she is. Yeah. Um, oh, and, and also, by the way, that yeah. the reason he ended up in the bush was that once other Cappy was done poking and prodding... She took him down and said, hide here until they find you. Which, again, if the story is true, mm -hmm. if this is not totally made up, yeah. there are a lot of details in here that are weird. Yes. Now, some of it you can write off as an imaginative three-year-old, obviously. Yes. Um, but why would he talk about the other Cappy? Um, Great and question. again, three-year-old... Could just be an old, another old person mm -hmm. that they said looks exactly like her because they're yeah. a three-year-old. Yeah, it's like an old woman or something. Yeah. yeah. So for for the sake of discussing this story, we're gonna assume it's true. But um, I think if you watch the video that's coming out on Friday, I'm very skeptical of this one in actuality. But if we're gonna talk about it as if it's true, yep. The kid is. I, I think what's going on here is the uncanny valley effect. That's why he said robot, not because there was mechanical clanking or anything like that, um, but because 
that's just how you would how a three-year-old might perceive it they yeah. can tell that something's off yeah they can't tell what it is they can't describe it it's not a monster yeah but it's wrong yeah and i think that's where it fits in mm -hmm. now what what could that have been who, who knows there's there's nowhere near enough information and the know, yeah. uh the klamath indians um they and i'm using the terminology from the government Klamath Indians, the Klamath natives, they do not seem to believe in any sort of thing like that. I could not find any reference to it. I bought a book on their folklore. Did you really? I, I read through uh, academic papers from the early 1900s and the late 1800s. Nice. I, I sat through and I, you know, went went on WorldCat, went into the, the library system, looked through everything, couldn't find anything. Mm -hmm. So it seems like whatever this is, it is not... Uh, it's, it's not something the natives recognize from the area. Or at least that if they have described it, they didn't describe it in any similar terms. Yep. And the area does have folklore. The Klamath people, the Shasta uh, broader group, all believe that, um, or at least you know used to believe, depending on you know, the, the situation, yep. that when the world was new, mm -hmm. the old man in the sky was up in the sky yep. and wanted to get down to earth, but he couldn't because it was flat and he, he just couldn't jump that far. Yeah. So he uh, trickled ice and snow and rock down from the sky until eventually Mount Shasta rises out of the ground. Yep. And if you look if you look at it, it really dominates the landscape. Like, we'll mm -hmm. have pictures of it in the video on Friday. It dominates the landscape. Um, and it does have its little, like, offshoot called Shastina, uh, okay. <laughs> which is, like, attached to it. But, like, <laughs> there's a, a big glacial rift between yep. the two of them. Uh, Shasta has seven glaciers on it. Four mm -hmm. of them are very large. Uh, there's a glacial valley that no longer has a glacier in it. There, mm -hmm. it's a it's a very big mountain. Like it's it would sound as such. Yeah, yeah. And if if you're from the East Coast, you might like you know you've probably been through the Appalachians. You've probably been through into the Adirondacks. If you're from up north, like it does not those kinds of mountains don't do justice to what we're talking about. The those mountains, if you were to put them next to Shasta or Rainier or something like that. They look like hills. Yes. They, they just look yes. like rolling hills. Uh, these are the, the big mountains. Mount Shasta is the second highest in the Cascade Range. Mm -hmm. um, it is currently, I believe it is a, it's not a dormant volcano, but it is not expected to erupt anytime soon. Rainier, on the other hand, could erupt at any time. Yes. And is the uh, fifth largest mountain in the continental United States. So, and then of course there's Yellowstone, which will... Kill us all. <laughs> Eventually kill everybody within like a 500 mile radius or something like that. Yes. Uh, Mount that's... Hood is also very tall and in that general area as well as yeah. a very nice mountain. I was on yeah. that a little over a year ago. Yeah. I like being out this way where there's no mountains that can kill us. Yeah. The Northeast really There's other things that can kill us. Like what? I don't know. Nuclear war. I guess. Yeah. In terms of natural disasters though, the Northeast is pretty like safe. Yeah. We are we don't get hit by hurricanes too bad. Like we're... We, we're we've, had, we've had one earthquake in the past like 20 was, years. that was a weird earthquake that too, was but yeah so shasta very tall mountain lots of mythology seen as a very sacred spiritual space both by native americans and by uh you know newcomers to the region yeah but none of that no folklore that really suggests like you know robot grandma monsters yes archie why are you licking a wall he will lick anything that you put in front of his face he was with licking the corner <sighs> earlier today He's, special? he's something. He's a special young lad. He's a special young lad. Aren't you? So, part of the reason that this story matters is because Grandma did not chalk it up to just being some piece of, you know, just imaginative childhood lore. No. Because yeah. she, allegedly, according to her, had a similar experience on Shasta a year prior. And similar in the sense that it was weird, not necessarily similar in the sense that the same thing happened. Yeah. She was camping with a friend. She was staying in a tent. Her friend was staying in a camper. Um, <laughs> just visible on screen, slightly. Uh, yeah. And they're hanging out at night by the fire. And at one point, they see off in the woods that there's a pair of red eyes staring at them. And they're like, that's weird. They shine a flashlight at it, and the, the eyes go away. Yeah. It's like, ah, it's probably just an animal. Like, you know, there's, there's animals around here. Yeah rude um shasta also at one point had grizzlies i don't know if it still does mm -hmm. um, i don't think it still does but i know at one point it did 
Uh, grizzlies are actually essential to the folklore of the Native Americans in the region. Mm -hmm. um, they, in fact, the Klamath people believe that human beings are the offspring of uh, a grizzly bear and the old man in the sky's daughter. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and the grizzly bears used to walk on two legs and have a language and all that. Hmm. Yeah. The Native American folklore is so cool. Oh, I love it. It's so different from from the European stuff. Like, yeah. very fascinating. There's a lot of parallels that I think are interesting, but very, very fascinating. Um, the grandma and the friend see the eyes popping up around all night, and every time they shine the flashlight at it, the eyes disappear. So eventually they decide, you know, it's late, I'm tired, I'm going to go to bed. Yep. They each go to bed, and in the morning, Cappy wakes up outside of her tent. She went to bed inside her tent. And she feels just horribly sick, achy, you know, cold sweats, all that. And reaches back on her neck because it hurts and finds two puncture marks. Like spider bite size. Interesting. So she goes and she wakes up her friend who is also on the ground outside of his camper. Mm -hmm. He feels the same way. Two puncture marks. They both assume that when they were hanging out by the fire, they were bitten by some sort of venomous spider or something like that. And, yep. you know, that's all this is. It's not a big deal. Uh, and that's that. That's it. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of where the story ends. But I think if you're, if you're going to look at it and suggest that these two things are, first of all, true, and second of all, linked, um, you'd probably be getting some sort of thing whether that's someone practicing witchcraft or some sort of a monster for lack of a better term yeah that i assume would be uh you know try, shooting for some sort of like cerebrospinal fluid or something or i mean or at the very least sucking your blood uh something vampiric or something that the puncture marks were actually it injecting something and putting them to sleep yeah, I mean, that was my instinct. It's yeah, like just like even, drugging them. Well, yeah, even just from a storytelling perspective of, like, let's just go full-on, like, fiction here. If it was, like, some weird spider monster, like, like sinking some, adjust enough venom into mm -hmm. them to, like, make them pass out and, like, do whatever they want to do and then have them wake up where they did. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. Yeah, the only thing I can see is that, you know, maybe it's something that, like, someone, someone or something injected them with something, took them up and, you know prodded around did whatever it needed to do yep. and then put him back and did the same thing with the kid but because he was a kid they didn't they didn't need to yeah drug him just could grab him but adults you can't just grab adults and drag him up a mountain which is why i would i would think like this is some sort of human or i i guess witchcraft maybe I, i'm not really sure something but, weird yeah um what huh sorry i was reading chat yeah and I, I think I missed something. <laughs> I think we both did, yeah. But that's that story. But I think what's really being described there by the kid is not that he saw a robot, but yeah. rather whatever he did see, he it was human enough to be like, oh, that's a person. That's that's my grandma, but I can't I can't come to grips with what it actually is. Like I can't I, I know I'm off put, but I don't know why. Now, with Mount Shasta, there are all sorts of other theories about, like, people have allegedly seen UFOs, uh, you know, coming out of the mountain mm -hmm. from the, the volcanic section. Uh, the the natives of the region, interestingly enough, say that it stopped smoking when the white man showed up, which is interesting. interesting. Um, now, that could just be, like, timing-wise. But you got to remember, the white man showed up in 1826. So. Fair. Uh, that that doesn't sound like you know folklore from from ages past. That sounds no. like something deliberate, but it also could Fair. just be storytelling. It you know could be any number of things. Yes. Uh, but yeah, Canadians um, were the first people to make contact with the Klamath uh, tribes, and then eventually the United States settled the region, uh, made some rather lopsided deals with the natives, and you know. That's the thing is the Klamath tribe only had a population of like 2,000. Yeah. So I, I think a lot of people look at this stuff and they look at the United States as kind of coming in and making these awful deals that they made sound good or whatever because the natives didn't know. I don't think it's that. I, the, the natives were not stupid. No. 
it was and i think that it's it's almost like patronizing patronizing the way that it's portrayed in a lot of our social studies courses and stuff like that they're like the americans came in and lied to the native americans or told them things were more valuable than they really were i i think i, I we're not giving enough credit to the native american tribes no, not even close i think 2000 klamath indians when there's 2000 of us and like thousands upon thousands of them yeah and they have guns and horses and trains like yeah you know like at this point it's just like it's a lot of things we've never had to deal with before yeah and we simply don't have the means of which to yeah, deal exactly with it. these were very intelligent people who just happened to be living in a type of life that was not industrialized no. and coming into contact with a major industrial power I think a lot of them made the deal that they thought was best for them. And in many cases, the United States absolutely did then later on renege on the deal or pass new legislation or find a way around it, skirt it in some way. Like, the U.S. government did some really shady shit regarding the Native Americans for oh, sure. The natives didn't just get screwed when we first colonized the entirety of the continental United States. They have continuously been screwed year yeah. after year since. Yeah, it's it's disgraceful the way that you know, and, and this is not a, a one party issue. It was no. uh, that when when the uh, Klamath Indian Termination Act, which terminated their status as a federally recognized tribe in 1954, that was presented and uh, voted through. Uh, it was sponsored by Republicans. Yep. Both Republicans and Democrats voted against it. Uh, it was a Democrat senator from Oregon who was uh, a, a Democrat senator from Oregon and a Democrat representative from Oregon who were arguing against it, like leading the charge against it. Um, and then in the 1980s, under Reagan, Reagan restored their status. So yeah. like both parties screwed around and both parties gave things back. Like I, I think a lot of people need to drop the partisanship on things like this and realize that like, listen, this is just the government. <laughs> Yeah. This is the government just being bad to people. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that's I wanted to I wanted to take the opportunity while we're talking about all this to kind of highlight some of the Native American struggles yep. that have been faced. And thankfully, I, I think I think there have been several major leaps and attempts to make things to make amends and and change. Obviously, it would be extremely complicated to give back all of the land. Yes, it would. Well, in terms but, of, I just saw uh, Becca's comment about looking into the missing and exploited native, native people's charities and things like that. Yeah, we have to mention that. That was a conversation that Mattis and I had a few days ago where I had messaged him and I was like, hey, we should highlight some missing 411 cases more specifically in relation to missing native women on reservations because those continuously, I mean, if you want to go more in depth into that right now, yeah. but we're, we're trying to find a way to respectfully and effectively incorporate that into this because yeah. through the movie Wind River, which uh, was made by Taylor That's Sheridan. That's how I found out about it. Yeah, it, you know, I guess then we both found out about it through that, which was by Ter Taylor Sheridan, which is the creator of Yellowstone. He made this back in 2017, stars Jeremy Renner. Um, was it uh, Elizabeth Olsen? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, she's in it as well. And the, everybody does a great job. But it, it was really eye-opening to the struggles that, people on reservations have to go with yeah you know or go through uh, a lot and so you know it made me really interested in the topic and now that we have a platform in which we might be actually able to help on more than just an individual yeah. scale we want to so we're going to be trying to find a way to make that happen yeah so that's that's exactly what i was about to lead into so yeah. i'm glad you like were right there with yeah, me. yeah yeah um you know i mentioned in a tiktok video the other day and of course it got like twelve thousand views because tiktok hates you know bringing attention to social causes instead Tick. of just dancing sorry does tiktok hate the natives uh well i'm i'm pretty sure the people who own tiktok yeah. hate everyone who isn't han chinese Fair. Um, they, they are in the pocket of the ccp and the ccp has been aggressively resettling Han Chinese people, mm. the, the, the main ethnic Chinese group, yes. all over China to attempt to displace other ethnic minorities in China. Um, the, the the fact that the... Well, that sounds yeah, familiar. There's, uh, I could go on and on about the many crimes of the Chinese Communist Party, but that's yep. not what this is about. What we're going to talk about here is the missing and murdered indigenous women because we have the opportunity to. Um, like I was saying, a few strides have been made. For example, in 2019, uh, President Trump signed into uh, law that there will be a presidential task force on, uh, it's something like presidential task force on missing American Indians and Alaska Natives, mm -hmm. I think. Yep. Um, 
where the goal of that task force is to investigate this kind of thing and try and get to the bottom of it. It's believed that a lot of it is trafficking, um, a lot of it is also murder, and if I remember correctly, something like uh, two-thirds of crimes against Native American women are usually uh, committed by non-natives. Mm. So, uh, you know, that, that leaves a third that are, but, you know, that's... That's their business. The non-natives part is our business. Yeah. So you know, the non-natives is very much within our control. Yeah. We to stop. We we can do something about that. And I think if if we can take care of two thirds of the problem, then we have we have done quite a bit. Yes. Uh, you know, and that leaves that gives everybody more resources to take care of the remaining yes. third of the problem. But in this case, you know, it's not trying to. We're not trying to blame any ethnic group or any like, no. specific group of people. It's it's a thing that happens, and it's something that deserves more attention. And bad people do bad things, yeah. no matter where they come from or who they are. Exactly. So that's you know, I, I'm looking into who I can reach out to. Um, so this week, I'm going to send some emails around, and there's a few organizations I have in mind. But at mm. the very least, I want to see you know what I can find, and cool. hopefully, we can organize you know maybe some sort of charity stream or something like that where we can direct a large pile of donations yep. over to one of these organizations uh you know do some some videos that are specific to specific cases yeah uh you know i think that, that would be like but we want to do it respectfully because these are yep. you know a lot of, a lot of these are very sore spots um so we yep. want to make sure that if we're covering something that you know it's something that had we, we with all the missing 411 stuff that's stuff that's been covered before yeah so if we go back to it it's whatever yeah um with with these things, a lot of the times they haven't been properly covered, and I want to make sure that I get all of the information from the proper sources. Yes, that we know what we're talking about. So that's why we haven't accidentally yet. screw yeah. anything over. Well, that's the thing is that that's why we also haven't implemented it into anything yet. Is yeah. because we want to make sure if we're doing it, we're doing it right. And like Aiden said, respectfully, because you know that it's covering missing four hundred and one cases, especially cold cases that have existed for decades about people going missing in the national parks, is one thing. Yeah. Cases that involve human trafficking, murder, and like blatant human trafficking, murder, and things like that, that are still very active cases, and a lot of the times more recent cases. Yeah, bit more sensitive topic. Uh, there, there, you need to tread lightly and make sure that what you're doing is right. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, that's good, 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 good tangent. That was a good tangent. It was. Most of our tangents are not on topic. No, that was very not on topic. close. Yeah, we did well. Good yes. job. So we will we will be releasing more information about that as as we find more uh, more avenues to do something. Yeah. So, but in you know going into the next the next section of this thing, um, smile. Yes, I, I want to get to get into talking about smile because the uncanny valley thing. A lot of people are aware of it. There's a, a poem that I meant to or a creepy pasta actually. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. I wanted to read it to you guys. I meant to get it up before this. Uh, I think this is it. Here we go. Uh, so this is this is the the creepy pasta that helped me find out about um, the Uncanny Valley yep. way back in the day. Uh, it's called Genetic Memory. Hmm. The or, it's the original author is unknown, um, but it reads as follows. Many classic horror icons, such as Geiger's Xenomorphs, Silent Hill's Pyramid Head, and other disturbing creatures share common characteristics. Pale skin, dark sunken eyes, elongated faces, sharp teeth, and the like. These images inspire horror and revulsion in many, and with good reason. The characteristics shared by these faces are imprinted in the human mind. Many things frighten humans instinctively. The fear is natural and does not need to be reinforced in order to terrify. The fears are species-wide, stemming from dark times in the past, when lightning could mean the burning of your tree home, thunder could mean, be the approaching gallops of a stampede, predators could hide in darkness, and heights could make poor footing lethal. The question you have to ask yourself is this. What happened, deep in the hidden eras before history began, that could affect the entire human race so evenly as to give the entire species a deep, instinctual, and lasting fear of pale beings with dark, sunken eyes, razor-sharp teeth, and elongated faces. Just be careful out there. That's the story that introduced me to the the concept of the Uncanny Valley. I'm surprised it wasn't the Polar Express. The Polar Express definitely gave me Uncanny Valley vibes, but I did not yet know what it was. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, for those of you who don't know, let me pull up uh, a quick little blurb on the Uncanny Valley. Um... Let's go to Scientific American. 
Uh, so, Scientific American writes, um, Today, the Uncanny Valley phenomenon remains almost as mysterious as when Japanese roboticist Masahiro, Moto, Masahiro Mori uh, first coined the term in 1970, but scientists have begun venturing deeper into the metaphorical valley to better understand why robots or virtual characters with certain human characteristics can trigger such mental uneasiness. Mm. That understanding may prove crucial as human-like robots or virtual companions enter homes and businesses in the coming years. So here's, here's something I need to read to you guys. Mm. This is a quote. We still don't understand why it occurs or whether you can get used to it, and people don't necessarily agree that it exists says Icy Sagan, a cognitive scientist at the University of California, San Diego. This is one of those cases where we're at the very beginning of understanding it. Mm. This article, to be fair, is from 2012. Yep. Um, but as far as I'm aware, there have been no groundbreaking studies on what the Uncanny Valley actually is and why it bothers us. Yep. There have been all sorts of suggestions. We've had things like, oh, it's uh, to give us fear of corpses. Oh, it's given us fear of sickness. Yeah. Uh, it's related to when we still had other hominids out there. Yeah. But I, I don't feel uncomfortable looking at, you know, people of different races. And I feel like if it were a, that kind of thing, yeah, we would feel uncomfortable with other races. We don't. Well, we don't. Um, <laughs> yeah, some people do. But even with like looking at reconstructions of like, like Neanderthals, Denisovans, yeah. and even yeah, you know, I, I don't feel like I don't get the uncanny valley feeling looking at that. Yeah, no. Yeah, you know, pull up a picture of like Homo habilis. I look at it, and I'm like, ah, that's uh, that's a monkey man. Yep. That is that is a personish thing. Yeah. I don't feel intense fear. Yeah. If I saw something like that out and about, I would probably be like. But you know, I'm not gonna not gonna. It's the missing link. I won't feel fear. No. It'd be curiosity, not fear. Exactly. So why is it that these specific set of characteristics inspire fear? Yeah. The and, and I think it, you know, it it works the same way. When I see like a very sick person, I it's not fear, it's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. You know, it's if empathy. I see a, if I see a corpse, it's not fear, it's sadness. Yeah. You know, it, the, the fear response is what's unique here, and I think that's something that a lot of people miss is they're, when they're saying, you know, it's supposed to be an evolutionary way of avoiding uh, things that, you know, might make us sick or be violent. But you don't feel fear looking at those things. No. You feel fear when you look at, you know, that smile that's in the thumbnail of this video. That's when you feel fear. That's not unease. When when we went into that theater and you got that first glimpse of the, the girl smiling like that, th first of all, it was really well done. Yes, it was. Like the, the pacing, the, the timing of it, the way that they reveal it, like, yeah. it just... The actual, like... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, um, I, I don't want to give too much away without a spoiler alert, but the point is, like, they did a damn good job and it was fear. Yeah, it was it was that is that is scary. <laughs> they did a very good job of following the Jaws method of withholding the monster till the end. And it's really mm -hmm. not even I mean, it is, but it isn't. Yeah. And it's it, it the movie. It really keeps you guessing. The pacing is phenomenal. You go from like, yeah, uh, you know, it, 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 it really builds well. Yeah, um, there's, you know, multiple you know, kind of climactic moments leading up to like you know the big yeah the big mo it's it's there's just... also some like good natural reactions from yeah people. so like this isn't a spoiler but the guy who plays A Train in the boys is is the is husband. in the movie yeah yeah and there's just some great moments where he's like what are you talking about like he just like like yeah I think I I will say this the one thing that I felt like was weak in the movie mm -hmm. was his character oh yeah they could have done more with him I, I felt like. His, I did. I did not understand why they were getting married. No, no, there, like was, that there was, was no emotional yeah. build up within the relationship whatsoever. Yeah, her, her, the main character's fiance. Uh, yeah, you, like early on, you're like, oh, they're in love, great. And then just his behavior does, and their relationship does not reflect two people who are getting married. No, um, but they, and the problem is, that, like that happens sometimes, but they didn't give any yeah. implication as to why it was already like so close to the brink of breakup. Yeah, so, uh, he he does not respond very well to no to things that happen. 
Um, to be fair, she was... Um, yeah, f from an outsider's perspective, losing her mind. But that's what I think was so great about the movie, was what we're dealing with here is, first of all, the main character is a psychiatrist. Yeah. Like, she is a clinical psychiatrist. It is her job. She works at a hospital in their emergency wing, like, for psychiatric cases. Yeah. So they, they do a really good job of making the narrator somebody who should be really reliable yes. when it comes to psychology, but she's not. You, you, you're given an unreliable narrator. You yep. got to figure out what to do with that information. Yep. Um, which I, you know, I thought it was phenomenal. I thought that that was a really good stylistic choice, a really good writing choice. And I think that, uh, that like even down, it's, it's a movie, it's obviously a psychological thriller. It's a psychological yep. horror movie, but there's jump scares. Yeah. Jump scares are really good. Yeah, they were well done. Like, they're, the, the timing is... They, they never do it when you expect them to, mm. is what I noticed. Is there, there were very few moments in the movie where I was like... Knew exactly when it was coming. A lot of horror movies, they'll do the thing where, you know, they'll frame it so that, you know, the screen is, you're, you're here... Like, I, you guys obviously can't see that, but you know what I mean? Like, where, like, if I'm on the screen, yep. there's all this space over here yep, yep. that they just leave blank, or there's, yep. like, an open doorway or a window, or there's Insidious where they just, like, slap the demon right behind him, even though he's centered on the screen, which is why that scene got me so bad. Yep. You know what scene I'm talking about in Insidious? Uh, I don't know if I, I don't, I don't think I've seen the first one. All right, well, we'll yeah. have to watch Insidious, yep. but where they'll just make it kind of obvious from the cinematography that you yep. know it's coming. This movie did not do that. Yeah. No, they, and they, they did some really good job of uh, diverting your attention to think that, like, it wasn't just, like, the jump scare was a really good jump scare, but in instances, like, the one with the car approach, that one, mm -hmm. um, they will lead you to believe that is a very normal scene. And everything beyond the point of just, like, not cinematography that is leading you to the assumption that it's something's yeah. going to happen... Like, actively things are happening in the scene that would contradict any presence of some form of jump scare, and then it happens. And it's like, oh, okay, like, well done. Like, that was yeah. very well executed. And I think there were multiple times when, like, both of us had theories about, like, where the movie was going. Yeah. How, how do you defeat the monster? Like, all this stuff. Like, yeah. And we both got, like, I, I think it, it baited both of us really well. Like we, It did, yeah. We were both wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you were closer to being right than I was, but we were like, at, as two people who are who are writers, like yeah. we were both, both wrong. Yeah. And usually when I watch a movie, I can kind of figure out where it's going. Oh yeah, at this point, that's like for me, I pre I love good storytelling. Uh, like I was just having a conversation about storytelling in the DCAU recently earlier today. Um, but a lot of times, at least now, because I've watched, and I'm sure it's very similar for you, but because I went to film school, I've written a lot of things, I've watched so many things, I've analyzed so many things. Now it's like, because I'm so familiar with the five-act structure and the hero's journey, like most stories now, I know yeah. what beats are coming and when. Doesn't matter what the details are, you know what the main points are going to be. And once you see the details of the, like, the beginning of the story, you can kind of generally you know, figure out where it's going to go. And stories like the ending of this or other things that you come across that just deviate from that in even just small ways are so refreshing because it, it really is elevating the art or the entertainment mm. to something beyond what it normally is, which is always nice. Yeah, it's... And, oh God, I'm just thinking of, like, the, the visuals throughout the movie. Yeah. Like, I, I can't even replicate that smile. And, yeah. and it's the kind of thing where you sit there and you're like, they, they definitely went and... Oh yeah, that's all. Spoke casting. to a psychologist too. Yeah, but they definitely like went and talked to, talked to people. And be like, all right, how how do we do this? How do we make the most unsettling smile possible? Yep. And in the trailer, it even talks about it. How it's like you know this this broad smile, but it's the worst smile you've ever seen. It's not. Say, it's not a happy smile. I wouldn't be surprised if they were slightly enhanced with VFX. I wouldn't be surprised by that either. Yeah, like just just little tweaks to make things even just slightly more exaggerated. But yeah, I think that would be I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull a it strong up really possibility. Um, um, I can't pull it up on screen, but, but I'm try if it. it wasn't, then it was really good casting because everyone who was involved directly with the monster, um, their portrayals from start to finish were really, really solid. 
So I, I'm seeing the people they hired to do it in the baseball games, like so I can. So oh I can yeah, yeah, yeah. Like oh wait, yeah, go into that because I, um, I this was news to me when he told me about the marketing strategy for this film. Yeah. So I mean, here's one example that I'll put on screen so you can see it. But they just were like, <laughs> it's it's really creepy. Uh, I yeah. think if I put this guy up here, give me one second to. Is that Judge at the bottom? <laughs> I think so. Um, <laughs> I'm going to see if I can... Um, I know if we have the guest one, I can usually... That's... Uh, no, that's not right. Um, uh, the React one, I can't set up right. Uh, I know that there's a display capture option in here. There it is. Um, display. Display 2. No, that's not it. Display one. Okay, so uh, hmm. let me see. I'm gonna give me one second. This uh, I'm gonna drag this guy down to this screen, and then um, that's up over on that screen. So uh, here's the display capture. There we go. So that's the smile we're talking about. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, and it's, it's not the only one there, uh, was also, if we close this one out, there's, uh, this girl. That, that's a good one. Yeah. So, and I'll pull up, uh, there's, of course, then there's, this is the actual one from the film. Like, ah, yeah. Like the other two, I, it's gotta be VFX. Cause like the other two I, I looked at and I'm like. Ah, that's, you know... Like, you know what it is? It's, it's like this... These ones are also almost, like, funny. Also, it's much lower quality That That one's pretty soft. That one's pretty good. But the second I pulled this one on screen, I had the shiver go down my spine. Yeah. You know well, what I mean? You also have the correlation to what actually happened in the scene after this. True. But I think... I think the edges of her mouth were slightly sharpened, especially on that left side. Yeah, I see what you mean. Like, I think... Yeah, I, I, it's, I can't really... Yeah, you can't make your own mouth. Unless she just naturally has yeah. that sharp of... Maybe it may have just been really good casting, but you look yeah. at that and it's like, mm, like no, I, I think that may have been enhanced. I don't like it, uh, <laughs> but yeah. So that's what we're talking about. Um, go back to the podcast screen, bring us back in here. But yeah, so like it, it's um, you know, here, it, it, try and do it at the camera. I want to see if you can pull it off. Do it. No, nah, you're not. It's not enough. Uh, yeah. You need to look. Your your eyes are too happy. Your eyes need to be. Yeah. Look at her eyes are dead. I can't, but that's the thing. I can't yeah. smile without my eyes getting squinty. Yeah, I can't. Uh, I, I can't do oh, it. Oh, uh, you know what? What do you think it is? I think I think it's a composite, because you can't try and smile. Not tr Yeah, you can't do dead eyes with a smile. You I can. Mm. I've seen it happen, but it's very hard. You think they could composite that like in film? Oh god, yeah. You kidding me? Uh, yeah, I guess good point. I guess. Yeah, no. They, they would just take they'd take a plate of her not smiling and uh -huh. then do a plate of her smiling, and they would just use the top half of her face for the not for the like. They would use one lower half of their you face. You can do that with like film, not just an image. Oh god, yeah. Wow. How do you think VFX works, man? Well, I assume they didn't do that. Oh yeah, no. I mean, that, and that's pretty easy. All you would just yeah, have to I don't do is like I'm, I, I'm turning yeah. it off. It's deeply unsettling. Like I did. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> not not a fan of that. But yeah, no, I mean that that's probably what they did, considering it's it's unless you just naturally have that ability, it is not easy. The, the ability to just have a deeply unsettling smile on your face. The ability to just be definitively concerning. Oh, but I'm liking this lighting yeah. setup. This is a bit more. Yeah, I do too. So, but yeah, that's that smile. Um, I I don't want to go too much into the plot because I don't want to ruin it, but. Just like creating a very unreliable narrator who should yeah. be reliable. Yeah. Um. The the characters were, I, I mean, pretty pretty one dimensional because it's a horror movie. Yeah. They don't have a ton of time to really develop characters. But as far as horror movie characters go, I thought they were pretty well fleshed out. Yeah. I mean, I'm not as familiar with horror as you yeah. are, but I mean, it was pretty good in my opinion. Yeah. It was very very uncomfortable. I'm not a I. I I was very happy to have Archie, because um, I was very unhappy to be alone that night. That's for sure. Yeah, it was. It was just, yeah. But with that, uh, it is eight twenty p.m., which means super chat time. 
if chat. Uh, Aiden, what are the Super Chat rewards this month that we have planned? So just $1,000. Yes. So for $1,000, we have Laura Lodge 80s aerobics, which we will yes. get dressed up in the spandex and the, and the like, the, um, if my mom is still... Make leg warmers? Run under our... Yeah, I was going to say whatever those things yeah, are. Yeah, the, the spandex, the, the unitards, and the leg warmers, the and all that. Yeah. The and we will do probably like a five minute yeah, yeah. aerobics video. Um, it'll probably be like a like an SNL digital short style thing. Um, yeah. And then uh, for 1420, what 1420 do they get? 1420 is the Aiden is a cat made Twitch stream. Why'd you say yes to that? Because uh, Steven did it, so if Steven can do it, I can do it. Fair. You want to come up here or no? So yeah, you get you get cat made Aiden if you uh if you raise fourteen hundred twenty dollars in the next twenty one days. Yes. Twenty two days. Um which I hope you do because my birthday is November tenth and uh I am turning twenty five and will need spending money. Yep. I also have to fly. I don't like flying. I'm going to a wedding. It's gonna be fun though. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, but um, yeah. All right, so uh, we so super so we're you know I, I like the idea of letting them you know suggest suggest things via yes. super chat. Yeah, we still need so, two fifty five hundred and seven. Yeah, we need two fifty five hundred seven fifty. And this month uh, we're working on writing these, but uh, we got we're putting the Wendigo on trial. Yes. We're doing a blue snow shovel self defense course. Yes. And not this weekend, but the following, I will be doing the Laurel Lodge cocktails. Um, yes. So we are good to go on those. I uh, I will let everybody know ahead of time. Uh, this coming weekend is the 24-hour stream. Mm. Good for me to know. Yes. Uh, this weekend is the 24-hour stream. It starts Saturday night because I have a concert on Friday night that I have to play in. So. Oh, yeah. That'll be a fun start. Yeah. So uh, Saturday, we are going to do the start of the 24-hour stream. And the, that that is that means mm -hmm. this show will actually be on Saturday. Part of the reason for that is that at 8.20 p.m. next Sunday, the Eagles are playing the Cowboys. Yes. Um, and we're going in 5-0, and oh, so... Yeah. So, uh... I always forget that you have that tattoo. Yeah. So, depending on depending on uh, things, you know, I, we, we could do... Hey, yeah, do you want to do the show Sunday? Right before the game? I'm going to be tired. I'll have been up for 24 hours. It makes more sense to do it on Saturday so you can rest... Yeah, true. All right, so it'll be it'll be Saturday uh, at at our normal time at seven p.m. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So, but I will be streaming for twenty four hours. So what I, it's gonna be kind of weird. I'm gonna probably have that camera running because we'll be on Twitch. Yep. So the show will be multi streamed, sort of. It'll be weird. Yeah. Well, okay. We'll just like continuously do this. Yeah. So we'll just be back and forth between the two cameras. Uh, it'll be fine. Uh, it'll be fun. Yeah. I would do the 24 hour stream on YouTube instead of Twitch, but it was a Twitch donation goal. And also, uh, I'm allowed to say things and do things on Twitch that I'm not allowed to say and do on YouTube, such as play guitar. Yeah. But Which yeah, we will so. be doing. Oh, by the way, yeah, for those who are, were not there on, what was it, Friday? Or Thursday? I think so, Friday, yeah. Um, Aiden and I committed to doing a small uh, live set on Twitch, mm -hmm. and we're going to be playing five songs. We were just practicing a little bit earlier today. We should get, like, one or two practices, like, formal practices yeah, in this the week. week. Uh, but we will be playing 3 a.m. by Matchbox 20, Free Fallen by John Mayer slash Tom Petty, um, Useless by Ann Arbor, uh, Accidentally in Love by Counting Crows, and it's not my time by three doors, three doors down. down. All acoustic, of course. Yes. Um, but we will be doing that in this room. Yes. Right here. So if you want to be involved in that, uh, did we decide on a day for that? Thursday. This Thursday? Yes. That's what we said on stream. Jeez. All right. That's why I said we need to practice a couple times. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but yeah, super chat us your ideas for uh, those those first three levels, the 250, the 500, and the 750. You guys are closing in on the 250 goal. You're about uh, 55 bucks away from it. So um, without further ado, if you're new to the show, uh, we answer super chats first during the Q&A session. The Q&A session usually lasts, uh, you know, 15 to 30 minutes, depending. Yep. So uh, it's 825 right now. So I'm going to say we will go until 845 with Q&A. 
So send in super chats if you want to make sure they get read. Otherwise, uh, you know, if we get time, if we have time to get to your questions, awesome. But uh, you know, super chats first. Yes. So to start that off, secular. Oh, and send in super chats with your ideas for uh, the for, for the, yeah, for the gold. And I uh, also you can send them just in the regular chat. We just might not see them because these ones are big and orange, so it's a little easier to see. But Sequitur Tenebris for 1999 says, Off topic, I used my Demon Tarot deck. I feel like you shouldn't have done that. Um, I told you about before, and a couple of them got lost in Ohio. I do have the demons back, but I need to find a therapist. Can you help? <laughs> Is the therapist because of the demons or because you were in Ohio? Well, I can help you with the Ohio therapist. The demon therapist is a different thing altogether. I don't know if that's necessarily a therapist. It seems like, yeah, you, you might need a, a bit priest. more of a priest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Good luck. <laughs> oh, to be fair, I mean, that's... At least, with a, at least with a demon, you can be, you know, excised. The demon yeah. can be excised. Once Ohio, you go to Ohio... You can never... You can never... You can never un-go to Ohio. No. Yeah, it's just, You've done that to yourself for the rest of your life. Uh, Secretary Tenebris for 10 asks, do people experience the uncanny value when seeing a psychopath or sociopath? I mean, they have that psycho stare that makes most people on edge and uncomfortable. Uh, the irony there is most of the time you can't tell who is a psycho or sociopath. That's kind of part of their thing. I mean, we're diving into true crime a little bit yeah. here, but just in terms of the psychological profile, they're generally so good at manipulating people based off of their capability to observe and understand how normal people actually behave in a given social scenario that they are able to emulate the emotions necessary to get you to do what they want. Exactly. And so generally, you're not going to know mm -hmm. until it's too late. Um, like, for example, I mean, Dahmer's huge on Netflix right now. Yeah. Like, Dahmer was, Dahmer was a psychopath. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, I, I mean, and I, I think to an extent, people probably do get that vibe from sociopaths, but I think that it's... Not, I think it's because of things like the Kubrick stare. Yeah. Where, like, you know, that's usually used to highlight that somebody is psychotic. Yeah. Or, or a sociopath. Not that, you know, that's what psychopaths and sociopaths look like, but mm -hmm. rather when someone looks like that, they're clearly insane. Yeah. Um, but that would not explain the, the fear of, like, the sunken eyes and long faces and sharp teeth and things yeah. like that. I mean, the sharp teeth is kind of an obvious one, honestly, yeah. but, like, the rest of it. But, yeah, I mean, I definitely could see uh, could see that being a possibility. I'm I'm not a psychiatrist, psychologist. I don't know what I'm... I, yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm a full forest. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I have a minor in psychology, and I have a mother with a master's degree in it, and I'm kind of considering, like, maybe at some point going back to school to get a full major in it, if not more. Just... You can, you can get a master's. You don't have to get a major first. True. Yeah. Um, Might as well just do that. Becca wants cat made Mattis drinking milk. I hate you guys. <laughs> <laughs> do I have to? Do I have to like? Well, yes, <laughs> obviously. You're not just gonna sip milk. Also, yeah, Bill's Mafia. Let's go. How's Josh Allen doing? How's Pretty Boy doing? I am. I dude. I I want. I want the Bills Eagles Super Bowl so bad. Oh, I would be a, such <laughs> a basket case because. Uh, yeah, I, one of my ex-roommates who is now, uh, we just all went our separate ways, a uh, really close friend of mine went Here to St. Saint... Stand. <laughs> Good. Um, yeah, he went to St. Bonaventure, and so they're all Bills fans up there, and so I'm now part of the Bills Mafia. His friend thought that St. Bonaventure and Penn State were on the same level as party schools. I proved him wrong. <laughs> Uh, all right, Judas got Judas Goat Barbecue for twenty says great stream. I think the neurology of the uncanny valley is not just the structures of the face that are unsettling, but abnormal facial movements. Faces are deeply ingrained mm -hmm. in human interactions from early development. That's a very good point. Yeah, yeah. Also, smiling used to be a fear response. Yeah, it was a nerve. It was like to show that like you weren't a threat, basically. Oh, uh, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like you know, dogs rolling yeah. over on their backs. In, in primates, it's yeah. like it, you know, like chimpanzees and everything. Smiling is still like a like, I'm friendly, I'm friendly. Yeah. Kind of thing. Um, Interesting, because I, I could have sworn somewhere I saw that, like, with gorillas smiling, like, showing your teeth was taken in the size of aggression. Or I think in gorillas aggression. it is. Okay. Like, I'm not sure yeah, why, no. um, but I think it's because they bare their teeth to be like... It was either... I can't... Maybe I, maybe I have it backwards, and it was a threat, not a fear response. I It's been years since mm -hmm. I took the class, uh, but... 
I just remembered that from high school, if I uh, if I remember it correctly. So somebody asked, how close are we to 250? Up in the top right corner of the screen, there's the Super Chat total this month. Yep. And we are at 241 right now, it looks like, from where I'm sitting. Isn't that handy? So it's very handy. It's so much better than having to m manually do the math exactly. on our end. Um, <laughs> Jamie and Fire for 21. No, Damien Fire 21 for five. Who can you tell I'm tired? My first ever super chat. Thank you. Uh, if demons are fallen angels, how close do you think their appearances would be to bibli bibli biblically accurate angels? Love you guys. That is a very weird Bible question. Um, like not, <laughs> It's not a weird Bible question. It's a weird Bible question like, yes. for the weird Bible show. It's like, um, where is Isaiah when you need him? Yeah. Uh, so first of all, the idea of demons as fallen angels is still up for debate. Um, the term that's used often is evil spirits, and there is the suggestion that demons uh, are angels who who fell with Lucifer, uh, Satan, Beelzebub, however you want to say his name. Um, Lucifer is the one people most understand, but it's also the least accurate. Um, so, like, and the thing is, uh, for example, you know, Satan appears to people as a, you know, beautiful man sometimes. Um, there's a lot of instances in the Bible where angels take the form of human beings mm -hmm. and look like us. And, you know, the biblically, the whole biblically accurate angel thing is a very fun meme and everything and uh, and all that. But um, it's, it's not like angels can't change form in Christian theology. It, angels can appear as human and appear as other things. Um, you know, but I, I, I think that you absolutely could find yourself in a situation where, you know, maybe you have a, a fallen seraphim that has the many eyes and the six wings and all that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say, you know, uh, unless like that ability to take that form is taken from them when they fall, but there's that, that's the thing about Christian theology and, and Jewish theology as well is when it comes to that stuff, there's not a ton of canon scripture on it. There's a lot mm. of apocryphal scripture, but we don't uh, we don't know. Yeah. Um, you know, even even the theologians couldn't really tell you. There's a lot of suggestions. There's a lot of debate, but that's one of the cool things about uh, about faith is you know, there's like there, there's always always arguments and always discussions to be had. So I I mean I certainly would not want to find out what they look like in person. I can say that much. No. I would not be shocked, though. I think it would be per perfectly feasible that they could have the appearance of, like, one of the angels from Revelation. Yeah, that would make um, sense. If you guys want a good video on the categorization of angels, um, Wendigoon has a phenomenal one on all, all the classes of angels. Color me surprised. Whatever happened to Aiden going to Hot Topic with the Make Window See Great Again hat? I forgot to do that. Yeah. I think I had trouble finding a, a way to get the hat. That does not surprise me. I just have to I have to figure that out. Once I do, once I do, I will do it. But Yes. Um just keep reminding him. Yeah, keep reminding me. I will put that on the list of things I have to do, yeah. Uh History Daddy for two pounds. Uh Pound is uh pound's getting pretty close to parody there, uh, Ryan. Might might be that the dollar is more valuable soon. That'd be the first time in a while. Yeah. Might be the first time ever, actually. Really? Uh, yeah. Wow. Uh, but yeah, so thank you, though, for the, the tequila shots. <laughs> Biggest donation goal idea. I just saw this one. Wendigoon dress. I cannot promise that you get Wendigoon to dress in anything. Um, yeah, no. He's worse than I am, as far as I'm aware. He, uh, the man, I, if I, I probably could get him a, like, Hawaiian shirt with, like, Wendigo's on it. You can probably yeah. buy that for him, and he would probably wear that. Yeah. Uh, Secretary Tenebris for nine ninety nine says the demons need therapy after being trapped in Ohio. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, yeah, that makes complete sense. All right, I know some people. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll have my people call your people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Judas Goat Barbecue gifted five Lore Lodge memberships. Wow, thank you so much. That's so I nice love of you. Um, thank you very much. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, Matty P thirty four hundred for five Canadians said, "Go Bills!" Any more collabs coming up? Yes, yes. There is another missing four one collab coming up. Have we figured that out at all yet? I'm working on it. Okay. I think I might have found the guy we want to talk about. Um, yeah, there's okay, a case. Cool. There's a case in Virginia uh, that I think I might want to do, but there's also the obvious option for 
the location of one of the two people we'd be working with. So yeah. I will have more information on that when it is set in stone. But yes, we've got another very fun one coming up. So stay tuned for that. Uh, somebody did say, I just saw this, the guy from Heaven's Gate and Charles Manson looked pretty manic, though. You gotta remember that they choose pictures where these people look insane. Like... Fair. Yeah. The the picture of the guy from Heaven's Gate where he looks totally manic is a still from a video. Mm -hmm. So, of course, when you're talking, you always make, like, different facial expressions that you can take out of context and fuck with. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> My bad. At least with uh, you, this not, this not, yeah. not me. So, point is, like, you gotta remember, when it comes to still frame images of people, like... A lot of the time, those are taken from videos. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's a little hard to tell. Um, let's see. Uh, Dovin Doragon for five says, uh, have you read Jeremy Robinson's books? They have a unique take on Christianity and supernatural things. Also, my birthday's tomorrow, so here's a gift. Well, happy birthday, Dovin. Happy birthday. Yeah, uh, I've not read any Jeremy Robinson. Um, I'm not familiar either. Is he a... Uh, Fiction author? Wow. Mm. Author of, of of 60 novels and novellas. That is a Whoa. lot of a lot of writing. That's impressive. Um, I'll have to take a look into it. And he's only 47. Wow. That's impressive. That's it's like James Patterson level. Thing. Yeah, that's intense. Stephen King. Um and Damien Fire21 for five said one more weird Bible question. What are your thoughts on the seven archangels mentioned in Revelation? Um I I don't recall there being seven archangels mentioned in Revelation. Why? Then again, you would recall better than I would. Um, let me uh, take a look. Because there's... In the Bible, there's... Uh, there's only one mention of... Or... Uh, is it okay? Yeah, two mentions. So let me uh, pull these guys up. Um, so we get Thessalonians four sixteen. We get for the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, and uh, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. That's talking about, of course, the rapture. And then uh, in Jude 9, we get, Yet Michael the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. Um, so the, there's only two mentions of archangels in the Bible, and neither of them are in Revelation. There is a lot of non-biblical text it talks about archangels. Yes. Uh, and that's kind of the, the issue is that a lot of people think, oh, well, you know. The, the, the. But yeah, there uh, there is the seven archangels. Um, th those do come up. I think it's in the, it's, uh, what is it? It's Oh, yeah, it is the Pseudo-Epigraphica. Um, Pseudo-Epigraphica is falsely attributed works. Um, basically, like, it's, uh, the, the word Pseudo-Epigraphica basically means that it's uh, false authorship. Yeah. So works where they're like oh this was written by for example if you came out with like a, a gospel of peter mm -hmm. but it wasn't written by peter yeah that would be pseudo epigraphica so it's it's kind of hard to say uh in current church tradition i believe there are four recognized archangels um in the catholic church it's... Oh no! Catholic is only three. Um, Catholic is Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael. Oh, because well, uh, they probably don't recognize Lucifer as an archangel. Well, the only two that are ever mentioned explicitly in the Bible as uh, like being at that level are Gabriel and Michael. Yeah. Um, the earliest specific Christian references are in the late fifth century to early sixth. Okay, yeah, pseudo Dionysus. Um, so Michael, Gabriel, those are the two that like very clearly like one is god's messenger and one is god's warrior yeah like um michael gabriel and then you get raphael then uriel then kamael jophiel and Zed zedekiel what uh, what does michael do in a warrior way within the bible there's there's just uh you know he he's always the one fighting lucifer got it well lucifer again and if, of course lucifer is not even an archangel Luc lucifer is a a mistranslation or a translation depending on how you want to look at it of day star or morning star mm -hmm. um 
but there's mentions of uh in i can't remember exactly what book it is off the top of my head but there's one mention where i uh, who is it um i still love that lucifer morningstar is technically a dc character like, that's incredible. And Constantine. Oh, I just think that's... Yeah, so here funny. it is. It's from Daniel. Um, let's see. Uh, full chapter, Daniel 10. Um, Suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O oh, Daniel, uh, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. Then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, and behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, mm. archangel, yeah. is how you can translate that, came to help me, uh, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Now I have come to make you understand that what will happen, blah, 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 blah. The point here is, uh, uh, let's see, then he had said, uh, do you know why I've come to you? And now I must refer return to fight with the Prince of Persia. And when I have gone forth, indeed, the Prince of Greece will come. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, uh, what's being said here is uh, the, the Prince of Persia is not like uh, Darius mm -hmm. or Cyrus. I think it's yeah. Cyrus at this point. It's not Cyrus, the King of Persia. The Prince of Persia is the demonic entity that has sided with Persia. Mm. Uh, you know, we get all of these references to, like, uh, Kamash and Baal, mm. like, all, and they're referred to as, like, the abomination of Moab and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, where the, there are these other semi-divine figures that appear to be angels and prince in this context. When he says, when he's talking about princes, he's, and he says, Michael, one of the chief princes, he's talking about angels. Yeah. So he's talking about angels and demons who are fighting each other here. Yeah. So Michael is often the, the angel who's going and, like, you know, being the trump card. Mm -hmm. Like, because uh, one one thing that's constant to Christianity is there's constant angelic spiritual warfare going on. Yeah. At all times, and you can't see it. Uh, Christianity is so much cooler <laughs> than, like, church makes it seem. Because they want to give you the version that, like, is, like, be a good person. Should we do, like... like the... I, I have Bible lore videos planned. I was going to say, but, like, should we do a series specific of, like, Christianity is cool? And, like, not, <laughs> not like, like, Bible studies, like, it's cool to be good. Just, like, it's cool because, like, some wild shit yeah. happened. I mean, that is what weird Bible is. Yeah. But in podcast form. But, yeah, I've been thinking yeah. about doing, like, little mini stories like, uh, like Jonah and the Whale. Yeah. The, the fall of Jericho, like, all this stuff. Uh, so, yeah, I definitely want to talk about some of that stuff. Do you want to come um, up, or do you just want to... Yeah. Let's see. Uh, what? Huh. I think he's got to go out. He might. He's, he's been out recently enough. He can wait. Unless you want to take him. I can keep reading Super Chats. No, it's... Um, you just want to play. Uh, who even knows anymore? Uh, I'm looking for this super chat from Secular Tempris where he... Oh, there it is. Push up your eyebrows like a shocked expression, then pull the corners of your mouth back, but like you're chowing down on a big burrito. Honestly? Yeah. That that. Close your mouth a little bit. Uh, all right. Uh, push, your eyebrow, push up your eyebrows like a shocked expression. Dude, we're going to get memed. In the Discord. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm push up your eyebrows like a shocked expression, then pull the corners of your mouth back, but like you're chowing down a big burrito. So like <laughs> I just look constipated. <laughs> <laughs> Archie, do you want to make yourself heard? I just look like I'm trying to get past in like the 9G trial. Come here. Uh only if you incorporate veggie tails on Jesus. <laughs> yeah, one minute left. All right. Uh, what do we got in here? Uh, da, da, da. More Bible lore, please. Yeah, I would. I would happily do some uh, some Bible lore videos about you know stuff like that. Yeah, man. Everyone, get ready to <laughs> screenshot. Came here from when to go for the Bible lore TBH. The missing form one of folk stuff is just added fun, but I really wish y'all had more Bible. Yeah, I. Uh, you more know. Note. It, at, the reason that Weird Bible is only once a month is because it's like w Isaiah and I are so busy. <laughs> yeah. But um, I would love to do it more often if we could. Um, Did anybody here watch the Thornberry Thursday, by the way? I want to get some feedback on that from 
the audience and like you know was that format good would more of a video essay style be preferable they want the awu archie are you ready for the awu did you want to give them the awu ready have a tiny wolf like I, yes. I, I own a tiny wolf small wolf uh small bean. but uh yeah i have a list of, of bible stories that i do want to cover um so i i will start working on those but yep. uh the the bible is one of those things that it's just really hard to, <laughs> to make videos on because there are so many different interpretations and you know you're going to piss people off and I want to try and make the best possible content that is as not controversial as possible regarding the Bible. So those are going to be intense. I think if we were to do those, they would likely be scripted. Um, because I would just want to make sure that I say all the right stuff. Yeah. So if we do those, they will probably be scripted videos. I, with like graphics and stuff like that. Yeah. Overlays. Um, it'd be awesome if we could find an animator to do like That'd be you know, nice. little animations That'd here be and really there. Nice. Uh, uh, you looked out of it though. Yeah, I, the reason for that is because I was planning on doing something else, and then it was just taking too long. So I just ripped that. I love that book so much. I knew I wanted to cover it to some extent, but I did not review at all. That was from memory, from having read it a month and a half prior, and it was just Wednesday night recorded it, Thursday morning edited it. I it was hip fire immediately. The next one will be a bit more planned out uh, because I want it to be, but yeah. That's yeah. funny. It did well. Yeah, that's funny. For for being completely out of nowhere and not connected to our normal content. Yeah. It seems like it did well. Yeah. Um, well, we it got more videos it. than our early videos did. Yeah, true. There were more videos, more views. Uh, I was just going to let that one slide. <laughs> all right. Uh, but yeah, so... Wait. Uh, History Day, do you not know what VeggieTales is? Do they not have it in the UK? For some reason, that doesn't surprise yeah, me. Yeah, for some reason, that doesn't surprise me. That kind of makes sense, but it... it you poor man. I, yeah, I can do some VeggieTales reactions on Twitch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we were in slavery. <laughs> what, what's the thing about them canonically not going to heaven? <laughs> oh, good. What's the I need to... Can y'all do um, this donation stream for trucker trucker using on trafficking and discuss trucker highway trial or lore? <laughs> what was it? The uh, can y'all do a donation stream for truckers against trafficking and discuss trucker oh, hell yeah. slash highway travel? I mean, yeah. Okay, it, here. If it was in our branding, I'd do a, a donation stream for the railroad workers to yeah. get them to stri uh, to strike and unionize because, like, if they could, I think gonna... if they could, if they could maybe not. Prices would be out of control. Oh, they'd suck for a while. <laughs> like, the very reason they would suck is why they would need yeah. to have their demands met. Because they're being overworked and underpaid absolutely horrifically. All right, so... I don't just like trains. I here's, support the entire industry. Here's the, uh, <laughs> the tweet. Mm. Reminder that VeggieTales characters aren't human and therefore cannot go to heaven. They're dedicating their lives to a religion they know will not reward them. <laughs> Now that is true piety. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, never forget that Veggie Tales weren't allowed to show Jesus as a vegetable. <laughs> That's true. Wait, what? Yeah, you can't. <laughs> uh, or, I mean, I guess I can just read this. <laughs> Go ahead. You can't show Jesus in Veggie Tales. Moreover, none of the veg vegetables can be shown to have a redemptive relationship with God. <laughs> In other words, Bob, Larry, and the gang can point kids toward Jesus. They can describe the endless love of God and perfect peace of his saving grace, but they cannot enter into it themselves. Salvation is saved for the crown of God's creative work alone, and they are just vegetables. They're just abominations. What is it? Wait, wait. The sentence, salvation is saved for the crown of God's creative work alone, and they are just vegetables, is one of the funniest things that has ever been put in print what's the one quote it's like i guide the i guide others to the, like the, the red school quote from uh, yeah. avengers yeah, yeah i guide others to a treasure that i cannot possess yeah, yeah. 
Oh my god. That, in any case, was the rule laid down by Vischer, the creator of VeggieTales, yep. Vischer's mom, Scotty May, who has a PhD in Christian education. <laughs> She gave her son the twin ground rules for Veggie Tales against letting the vegetables themselves become Christians or depicting Jesus as a vegetable. That is insane. That's incredible. You'll note that while Veggie Tales creates many Bible stories, recreates many Bible stories over the course of its run, it stays out of the New Testament. Does it really? I, I never thought about it. On the one hand, it makes sense. However, you feel about the appropriateness of depicting Jesus as a vegetable, there's no doubt church audiences would get mad. Probably, yeah. But then I think about Bob and Larry telling kids about the magnificence of grace that they themselves know only secondhand, like the very angels themselves. <laughs> Jesus. Think of the wrap-up with Bob telling kids, God made you special and he loves you very much. Made you special. Loves you very much. Oh, yeah. Always you, never us. Oh, I feel like I'm losing my mind. What sort of cinematic universe is this where it's easier to imagine talking, thinking, feeling vegetables than it is to imagine how God might love those vegetables? <laughs> <laughs> Moreover, why do these vegetables appeal to Christian morality in tales like Where's God When I'm s -s -s Scared? <laughs> when God's salvific plan does not apply to them at all. Isn't moral anarchy the obvious philosophical conclusion for the VeggieTale pals? But even that doesn't make any sense. Think about the theological Pandora's box kicked open by, by Big Idea right here. The VeggieTales vegetables love and are capable of being loved. Junior Asparagus is shown to be a member of a family who themselves reflect God's own love in their devotion to each other. Bob and Larry's friendship, strained though it may be sometimes by Larry's dim-wittedness, is nevertheless a testament to the kindness of God being manifest into the hearts of his children. Mm -hmm. How then could the VeggieTales gang not be included in God's redemptive plan? This is like an entire essay. <laughs> this is insane. What is oh, this? Oh, wow. So here's a here's a sneak peek of what you might get if you tune in on the switch to Twitch streams. Woo. Come to think of it, even if Jesus is not actually depicted as a vegetable in Veggie Tales, are we the church not supposed to be Jesus in the rest of the world? Aren't the vegetables acting as the hands and feet of Jesus? So in a way, the rules are a spiritual impossibility. I love that there's this entire article just taking down the theological How conundrum long of Veggie Tales. Article? <laughs> That's insane. It's probably like 800 words. Uh, <laughs> You're Phil Vischer. It's the early 90s. You've got a gift for computer animation and storytelling, and you want to use those gifts to teach kids about the Bible. Your mother admires your heart and your drive, but she also knows the hard road ahead. She wants you to avoid simplistic moralizing and cutesy flannel graph lessons. She wants you to get to the good stuff, so she gives you some rules, ostensibly under the guise of keeping veggie tales safe for theological watchdogs, but perhaps with another, albeit hidden, meaning intended to teach a deeper truth. The wanton chaos of life without salvation. <laughs> The invisible God. presence of... T this is like a shitpost essay. Yes. You ever read those essays where... Did I send you the one about Mario? The TikTok? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the Mario yeah, essay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd see I, one on its own as well. Are you going to pull that up? Are you going to read I'm that? I'm going to see if I can... Oh, Jesus. I, I got to read this to you guys. Uh, th this reads to me exactly like this article or this essay. Um, <laughs> that starts out, everyone knows Mario is cool as fuck. <laughs> But who knows what he's thinking? Who knows why he crushes turtles? And why do we think about him as fondly as we think of the mythical non-existent Dr. Pepper? Yeah. Perchance. <laughs> That's, there's, no, there's no explanation of perchance there. And the, the grading says, you can't just say perchance. Yes. This is from a Philosophy 101 class, apparently. Yeah. Uh, I believe it was Kant who said, experience without theory is blind, but theory without experience is mere intellectual play. Mario exhibits experience by crushing turrets all day, but he exhibits theory by stating, Keep it up, baby. <laughs> I love that every time he mentions crushing turtles, the teacher just wrote, Stop. <laughs> and just, the, what, what's the one bit with the five question marks? Oh, he says, Keep it up, baby. Oh, okay. And there's just five, que yeah. six, yeah, five question marks. When Mario leaves his place, <laughs> place of safety to stomp a turdy, he knows that he may die. And the D in die is capitalized. <laughs> and yet, oh, for a man wow. who can purchase lives with money, a life becomes a mere store of value. Okay? <laughs> a tax that can be paid for, much as a rich man feels any law with a fine, is a price. <laughs> oh my god. 
Yeah. The, the, the professor writes, fine. Yeah. <laughs> We think of Mario as a hero, but he is simply a one percenter of a more privileged variety. <laughs> the note from the Professor is, why are we saying this? What do you mean? It's self-explanatory. And then after that sentence, but he is simply a one percenter of a more privileged variety. The life kind, perchance. <laughs> <laughs> this is the funniest article ever written. I don't know why this didn't get an A. It got an F. <laughs> exactly. I don't know why it got an F. It deserves an A. <laughs> the, when it was posted to Reddit, the caption, I spent my soul on this essay just for the teacher to give me an F. She didn't even understand my complex rhizoid referentialism because she is dumb. This deserves at least an A. Perchance. <laughs> we have to start using I'm going to get a tattoo on my forehead that says perchance. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, no. Inside the lip. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking no regrets. The no regrets. No regrets. It says perchance. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, okay. No. Perchance. Perchance. Would it work? I think oh, so. Oh my god. P E R C H A N C. No. No? We're short a letter. P E R C H A N C. Ah, yeah. Sucks. <laughs> Perchank. <laughs> but replace it, make it a K instead of a C. <laughs> Perchank. <laughs> yes. Yes. 100%. Whew. Yes, Archie. Yes. I assume yes. that's there. there's no more to the entire essay here. Okay, yeah. No, there isn't. That's funny. <sighs> All right. Wario and Waluigi are inverse versions of Mario and Luigi, hence the W names, M upside down or inverted. For this reason, the evil version of Peach would not be called Wa Peach, but rather Beach. In this essay, I will. One of my favorite entries into a video was me talking about the National Park Service thing mm -hmm. and then saying, in this essay, I will, and it cutting to the title card. Yeah. It's one of my favorites that we've done. Oh, it's good. Oh uh, boy! So did I miss any super chats? Yes. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go back to them really quickly. Let me search through. Okay, uh, here we go. Woo. Sector Tenebris for four, five said, "Imagine a VeggieTales episode on Revelations. They get turned into a stew." <laughs> Yo, <laughs> brutal. <laughs> Woo. Oh, they want the link to the eye. Uh, here, I'll... Oh, yeah, drop it. I'm gonna... Also, we reached the 250 goal, but we don't have a... Yeah, we, we need to come up with a 250 goal. <laughs> uh... Did it did it pop up in the chat? It should have. It's a link, so it might not. There it is. Can I pin it? How do I... How do I, I know I can 250 goal. We put, like, a proper skunk ape cover on YouTube. <laughs> like, one of the ones we I did... have to with... write it. <laughs> Yeah. Why not? Uh, I'll write it and we'll do it live. We'll do it live. Uh, okay. Redact it. Uh, Cakes for Five said, just my weekly donations. Got my Patreon mug in the mail. You guys are the best. I'm glad you got the mug. Nice. We're glad Patreon's doing as it should. Yeah, we're glad it's working. All right. Well, well we need to figure out the 250 whoo. before we leave. Do we? We should. Um... I, I can write a cover of that easy enough. All right. We'll do a skunk. I mean, would you... would? Real question before we go. Would you guys want a full-on Skunk Ape song for 250? 250 goal, eat gross foods on the 24-hour stream. The 24-hour stream is torture enough. I don't need further torture. Yeah, I, I don't know. All right, yeah. So for 250, I guess we can do... Uh, okay, YouTube video that no, you know we'll upload the uh, conspiracy theory song as well, um, and uh, for for five and seven fifty we'll we'll come up with something this week. Yeah. Um, if you're in the Discord, send us ideas. <laughs> Kevin, for for chance. chance, yes. Secretary Tempers for ten said also slushy rain since that was their brimstone new goal. Y'all should write some kind of shitpost yeah, article with viewer input. <laughs> oh yeah. 
Dude, oh, I, wait. that could be a section of the 24-hour stream. Yeah. Just writing, like, community <laughs> writing a shit post article. <laughs> all right, we've got, we got good, good ideas. Um, okay, all right. Thank you all so much for watching. We, what? Considering you're studying to be a teacher, what if we have people submit shit post articles and you grade, grade them, them on stream? <laughs> wait, that's actually a really good idea, right? <laughs> We're giving the Discord homework. <laughs> yeah. Okay, 250 to write the Veggie Tales Revelations episode script is a little low, but that can definitely be 750. Yeah, yeah. 750, yeah. we write the Veggie Tales Revelation skit. When does see mukbang? What does that mean? How would that work? I feel like we can't put that on, that would have to be on the Orange Video app. I don't know what that means. No, I know what orange video app means. Yeah, I don't know what that means. Mukbang? Yeah. Oh, that's when people just eat a bunch of food on camera. Oh. I don't get why people watch that. Why would that be? Okay. Why does Nikado Avocado, Nikocado Avocado have a platform? Why? What? It's just a man giving himself diabetes and crying. We're going, we're going, we're going, we're going. Thanks. If you if you watch Nikocado Avocado, why? Why are you enabling this behavior? You are watching a man kill himself. Slowly. And painfully. What is that? Nikocado avocado. Not from don't me. make me say this word again. You don't have to say the word. Just explain what he does. He eats food. Like a lot of it? A lot of it. Okay. All right. Well, I'll show you a video. Um, but... I think he really has to go. <laughs> yeah, he does. All right. Well, thank you all so much for watching. We will be back with more content. And, of course, the 24-hour stream. Next. Now we just need to figure out the 500 one. We'll figure it out. I think that would be... I was going to say that one would be the, the people submit their articles and we grade, grade them. them on stream. So, Might as well. Yeah. Yeah, for 500, uh, we will we will assign uh, an essay and I will grade it. I want the most unhinged thing possible. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll provide the topic and the rubric. Both of then... you to assume I don't know how to juggle. Uh, Valid. <laughs> how many should there be a limit to how many we receive, or is it just is this a very large lecture class that we have to grade all of them? Um, let's uh, submit it. I will grade all of them, but we'll pick like five to grade live. Maybe I don't know. I feel like you'd have to pre-screen them. Though. Yeah, true, like, true. Yeah. That won't be as fun. How uh, about what if we do? We submit. I don't want to make more work for the mods, though. Yeah, true. Oh no, no, no. We could just have a form. Where maybe we'll create a Dropbox where everybody can put no, theirs. I was they could just email it to the lorelogicgmail.com. I was going to say because then everybody can vote on their favorite essays, and we pick they pick the top five that they want to see reviewed. True. We'll figure. Yeah, we'll figure out a way to do it. Yeah, we'll figure um, something out. All right. Can you try and get Wendigoon for that VeggieTales script? I am sure if we get the VeggieTales script, not only will he want to uh, like contribute but yeah. he'll also probably help us voice act it yeah oh 100 percent. Um, yeah so all right well thank you guys so much we must go because the boy needs to be taken out i he said does. the boy and he immediately wagged his tail the so, boy all right we will see you guys next week have a great one guys see you everybody